Hey everybody, welcome back. Got another more VOD review here. We're on uh, Route 66. Let's see, it's a PC game. This is Platinum 3. Player says, I think I did okay. Take enemies tension, but I fade too late, causing me to die, lose team fights. I think that's why we lost the game. I also think I'm too scared to make plays as well. I feel like I have a good damage to heal ratio, 16k on both. Our Sombra was negative, but I, I don't think that was an issue. I think you'd be brutally honest. Um, so, if if you watched any... I, I guess I don't talk about this too much. I talk about more on Reddit, like when I'm responding to posts, is how little stats matter. They just don't. Um, because unless you have all of the context going around those stats, you, you don't really get much out of them. Okay, so for example, the Sombra being negative, right? If she's interrupting a lot of key cooldowns, none of that shit shows up on the scoreboard. She, so she could easily be negative, right? Um, I've been playing a lot more DPS, and I'm lower ranked than I should be because <laughs> uh, I've been trying new DPS, right? So I've been I've been playing basically in mid plat because um, I've been trying like Ash heroes where you're like initial target acquisition has to be really strong and mine's not my tracking is good so like if i play bastion or somebody like that um i could just run people over but um i'm trying to learn how to like do like single shot aim so anyway beside the point um when i'm when i'm playing on it when i'm playing on ash or playing a, a dps hero for example where i am using a lot of my resources to disrupt the enemy or um, just put pressure on them or um, interrupt cooldowns and things like that or, or t draw out cooldowns. That, none of that shit shows up in the stats. So I keep rewinding here because I was hoping I would finish yapping uh, before I g got to this damage orb. Um, if you're going to shoot a damage orb here first, uh, I, I like to shoot one from here because you can shoot it before the door opens. So even if they have a Widowmaker, which they do, uh, she's not going to hit you, right? So I stand right here and then I shoot the orb at like a second or two before the door opens. I think it's about a second. And it'll it'll get to the door when it opens and then you're already gone. Okay, so that's, that's the way you can get an orb out immediately. Um, I've been saying this a lot in reviews because that's just going to basically do that, right? It's going to go nowhere. Um, more in reviews that you want to get an orb out as soon as possible. So being able to shoot one before the um, timer is counts down is is even better. Okay. So what am I going to be looking to do here? One, not this. Okay. So this is we're we. I've been talking about this a lot recently because I my eyes got open to this uh, when I was playing Roadhog. Is the difference between and I've I've talked about it. I guess in general, but I haven't really assigned a term to it. Um, and it's called wide peaking, okay? So I always talk about when I'm holding a, a corner like this, I hold the corner very tightly, okay? And I do this. And then if, as soon as I see somebody, that's it, okay? I don't, I'm not gonna go any further than that, okay? Because I don't wanna open myself up to all of the enemy team or more than, um, more than I need to, right? So, this is peaking. This is wide peaking. Well, this is wide peaking. This is just running out in the street. Okay. So there's there's no reason for you to go this far. Okay. And especially as Moira. Because if you're going out here to shoot an orb, use the map geometry instead. If you're standing right here, shoot an orb at this angle. And it's going to go directly into them. And you're never going to see them. That means you're never going to take damage from them. The other part of this is if you're here and you shoot this orb and then this Genji dives over you, because he just dashed, right? Or I think he did. No, that's the Widow shot. Okay, never mind. Um, I don't know if he dashed. But if he did, this is a good time to go kill him. Okay. Honestly, the two of them should be able to do it. But this is, you know, this is this. Like even if the soldier dies, whatever, they should be able to they should be able to kill this Genji. So you ended up seeing it? Good. Okay. If we were here, we could have done all of this, right, without the danger of taking any damage from the enemy team. Right. And you're gonna find that the higher you rank up, the faster you're gonna take that that type of damage. 
So here, I'm going to... Yeah, you talked about fading too late. This is one of those times. This... I, I would already be looking to disengage here. Because we're down our tank and we're down another player. Our, I don't think our soldier was quite back yet. Um, there's just... We're trickling too much. So I, I want to I wanna get... I want to retreat, basically, as soon as that happens. Okay, so here... All right. We know that Genji's behind us, okay? Or at least we should, because we can hear him. So two things can happen. One, you can kill him, and then I would, I could, because we can hear the widow over here. You kill him, you fade right into the widow's face and, and kill her, right? Don't like go like right at her, because she can actually just kill you, um, even by accident. But I will. So Sam, Sam, right here, okay? I'm gonna fade. To like that, like if into the wall, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot at her. Okay, there's a chance that the life weaver might pull her or something like that, but you're disrupting her. That's that's what we care about. Okay, and then it, it takes if the life weaver is pulling her, that means he's not looking over here. So there there's some opportunity there for us to to make a good play. That's unfortunate. So the, the Cardiac Overdrive ended up uh, allowing the Genji to heal himself. It, I, I want to say, before we talk about this Coalescence, I want to say our, like, our tracking could probably use some help. This, is, this in particular, right here. We have to... We, we, he dashes through us, right? So we do this, and then we stop, and then we do this. That means to me, I, I what that means to me is that you ran out of mouse pad, because you said you're on, um, you said you're on PC. That could have been something else. I don't, I don't know, but that's what it means to me, is that you ran out of mouse pad, which means it's not necessarily that your sensitivity is too low. It could be that your mouse pad area is too small or that you're using your wrist to move your mouse and not your arm okay um, I'm not going to go into detail about that there's a lot of resources out there about using your arm uh, for your mouse uh, I highly recommend learning it I had to learn it all over when I was it, it, it actually wasn't that long ago it's probably a, a few years ago right a few years ago relative to the 30 years that I've been playing shooters um, I used to aim with my wrist, and I used to be a really, really good sniper in, in s some FPS games uh, that I played competitively uh, a million years ago. Right? So I used to have that, that very nice, quick flick aim, um, and then I used my wrist and a really high sensitivity. I have since moved to using a lower sensitivity because I find it's overall more accurate. So anyway, um, let's take a look at our sensitivity. I didn't like that coalescence because... When we cast it, the only person we could see was the manga, and you're not you're not gonna kill him, right? It, you just you just not. Um, we need to. W with what they have, I would be looking at these two, and I would absolutely solo ult them. I am I have no problem if I jump on them, and I'm not gonna kill them fast enough. Um, I I will solo ult them, especially him, because he's faster and he can get around. Right, and since I can track people pretty well with my ult, um, and and another thing, and this is a little bit more advanced. Um, in that instance, we knew he had ult because he got hacked by the Sombra when he, when we were trying to hold in that cave. So we actually fully knew he had ult by then. Um, I like to use coalescence during Genji's ult. Especially if I can get him to dash at me first, and then I fade, and then I coalescence, you can put a lot of pressure on him really quickly. Okay. I, that may have been an instance, unless I saw something specifically to use my ult, um, where I would actually would have held it a little bit. Uh, let's talk about positioning again. Okay. So we're standing behind our tank. So we're not going to take much, if any, damage. But... She can just bleep, and then she's gone, right? Now, all of a sudden, you're just standing in the open. Always be looking for a corner. 
okay? You can do everything you were doing from right here, okay? And then if you hear somebody coming this way, okay, then you can, you can turn and adjust yourself, okay? But being in the nearest cover or very, very near the nearest cover is going to save you a lot of headache. I think I'm going to make a video. I don't know. I'm not really... I have, like, basically zero experience on making, like, you know, pre-made videos or whatever you want to call them. Because I just, I press the record. When I do these, I just press the record button and, and start talking, right? And none of this is planned. I haven't watched these. Because um, it takes a lot of time to do, like, actual, like, video work and stuff. Um, but I, I was thinking of making a video about, specifically about positioning. Because I feel like it's probably the single most common thing I talk about. Especially uh, in, below Diamond. Um, I, I, after doing almost 200 of these reviews, uh, I have found that, um, metal rank players in particular, their weakest link or their weakest attribute is, is almost always their positioning. Um, and I feel like a lot of the reviews that I do, that's all I talk about. Okay. I talk a lot, a little bit of stuff that's like Moira specific. Um, but it's like, I feel like most of what I talk about is just, it's people standing out in the open. Um, and if you didn't fix anything else, just fixing that is, is going to get you, uh, get you up there in rank. Okay. And as you get a little bit higher, I would say into platinum and towards diamond, there, there's people who have better positioning and then they, you know, they suck at other things. Uh, but especially like low plat and below, it's 99% of the time, the biggest issue that that player has is their positioning. So um, I was thinking about making, I, I don't know, something where, you know, I before I do a review for somebody, I want them to watch that video and work on those specific things, and then they can, they can submit a review um, after they've worked on that. I only say that because, especially as this, as you know, my channel is a, what, a little over a year old now. Uh, so I, I get more reviews, I get more submissions, right? And if it keeps growing, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to be a friggin' streamer here, but I feel like there's going to be a point where I'm gonna get more reviews than I can do. Uh, because, you know, I'm, this is not my job. This is just a, just a hobby. Um, and, and that's gonna be, that's gonna be it. So, right, and, and that's the thing, like there, there's not much else for me to review here because we're just literally just standing out in the open, right? We're using the high ground. Okay, cool. This is good. I like that you're using the high ground. But you can see the entire enemy team, okay? A smarter player is going to put a ton of pressure on you right now, especially her, right? Because she has no mobility, okay? They're, they're not going to look at him, okay? They're going to look at you. So this is the problem is what's probably happening is you can win games like this where they don't even look at you, but then you'll go, you'll get into a match where one of the enemy players is looking at you and you're going to get dominated. Yeah. So this, this is... This is better cover usage, right? But but we, we used this cover because we had to, right? We used this cover because we got our fade forced out and now we don't have it. So now we know we don't have it. So now we're using cover, okay? We can't think that way. We have to be using cover first and then use fade because you want to use fade as a mobility tool. You don't want to use it as an escape tool. It's an excellent escape tool. It's probably the best escape tool in the game, but it's even more powerful when you can just use it as a mobility tool and use it as, as a way to get yourself around the map and then use cover as your way to prevent whatever you were gonna use fade for, okay, to escape. I, I like putting the pressure on here. This is good. It's just we are aim really hindered us there because if we would have been tracking him when we cast the ultimate he would have died for sure because it was a full second into the ultimate before we actually started hitting him so i like i like the reason behind that ult. we got a little tunnel vision there i like that you're putting pressure on him but we kind of walked out into the team so that that part was uh we probably should have gotten punished a little harder there
Okay. Yeah, we, we probably should have gotten a punish hard there. So, again, yeah, I'm definitely not watching this uh, whole thing. Because I, I feel like, you know, I, I don't want to spend another 20 minutes just talking about the, the same issues, right? You get the point. Is we 100% have to work on our positioning. So you can do a lot of the stuff that you're doing. It's just we have to do it from cover. All right, and here's another thing that I talk about pretty frequently. Okay, your tank's on the on the point, right? The point is contested. There doesn't need to be four of you on it or, you know, whatever. So it's usually not going to be me. I don't want to be the one that's on the cart because they're going to be wanting to kill the people on the cart. And who are they going to go for first? The easiest people to kill, which is going to be you and her. Okay. So if my tank's on the cart, especially when he's like near full health, I ain't touching shit. And really, he's in a pretty good position against this team because the only one that could really farm him is the manga. And he's... Uh, I, I, Mog is actually, at least for me, pretty easy to play against this hog because all you got to do is bait out his overdrive and then th that's it, right? That is that is Mog's like main um, strength against Roadhog. So we basically died there for no reason. Okay, so it, it's like the this is the the common theme of of these reviews is going to be positioning and getting off the payload. Okay, and again, that, so, and I have to reiterate, right? I'm, I'm, I'm being frank about it, okay? Uh, but the game does kind of teach you to play this way. So, like, I, I, I don't blame anybody. It's not, it's not like you're, you're, I feel like you're stupid or something like that. This is, this is literally what the game kind of teaches you to play, okay? It's not very, the game is not good at teaching you how to play it. And the learning curve in this game is exceptionally street, steep. I think a lot of people are kind of jaded because they've been playing it for so long. Um, even people who have been playing it for a really long time don't understand it that well. There's just so much. And as every time they add a hero, it just, it it makes t the team compositions, like the a number of available team compositions go up exponentially. It's not linear. It's exponential. Okay. So right now with, uh, I think there's 40 heroes in the game or something like that, there's there's almost 350,000 team compositions, which is insane to me, right? So, yeah, the enemy team could be 350,000 different variations, okay? It's like 330 or something like that, but it's over 300,000, right? More than anybody's ever going to memorize. Okay? So you're never going to know how to play against every single little composition, right? And, of course, there's going to be overlap there where one doesn't really matter over the other. Uh but the point is, this game is very complex. Okay. It's complex, but it's also really easy to pick up, right? The gunplay, the movement, the abilities, they're all very, they're pretty straightforward on, on how to use them. But to get the maximum, um, maximum effectiveness out of them takes thousands of hours. Okay. This is why you see so many one tricks, right? It, it's... Yeah, this well, let me take that back. This is why you see so many one tricks in the top ranks because they master that hero so well that there's it, it's it's hard for other players to to keep up with that right? because the skill ceilings in this game are exceptionally high. Now people talk about skill ceilings of certain heroes being low. The problem is is they're not as low as they think they are. The skill ceilings of some heroes are low. And I would say some skill ceilings are higher on other heroes, but those ceilings are higher than 99.9% .9 of players are ever going to reach on any hero. Okay, so I, I apologize for turning your review into a little bit of rant about how Overwatch works, but uh, that's the... This is all important to your gameplay because the point is this game is challenging, it's difficult, it's complicated. Okay, it, and the the way it kind of wants to teach you to play the game is is only good to about here. After this, you're gonna have to be so different. So, um, all right, I'm gonna wrap this up. We're 20 minutes. Um, cover and know your role. You're not supposed to be challenging the payload during overtime or during a last minute, unless you absolutely have to. Like you're the only one that can touch it. 
okay? Put yourself in a position where you're going to be able to get value and not take damage, okay? So we need to work on that. And that, that happens through not standing in the open, okay? Using cover as much as possible, okay? And then staying off of the payload, right? And using cover is gonna come with that because if you're using cover, you're probably not in the payload because the payload's always out in the open, okay? So, um, take it from there. I do like, you You do recognize the, the the priority targets, the low health targets, that's good, right? You fix up your positioning stuff and this stuff is just gonna start shiny, really, okay? And then when we do our coalescence, okay, that like the first one against the Mongo, you know, we didn't really have a reason for that, but I, you know, there was the one where he wanted to get the Genji and that was good. Let's just tighten up our mechanics. We're gonna have to have, have to figure out how to, to make our tracking a little bit better. Also, I noticed like when we were turning around in that mega room, um, there is something there that we need to work on. So let's take a look at that too, okay? Um, and then you'll you'll keep on pushing. You can you can keep pushing like this. Easy, easy. If you fix your positioning, honestly, I think you could get to diamond without changing anything else. Maybe maybe high plat. And then if you if we if we fix our coalescences and, and get a little bit better value out of them, diamond easy for sure, hundred percent. And I'm I'm not I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. There is no reason for me to tell you something that's not true. Okay. So okay. Well, that'll about do it for this one. Let me know if you have any questions. And good luck.